Hello and welcome to Tech Cubicle on SAP. If you are an existing SAP ECC or s hammer on-premise customer and you are considering moving to a Rise with SAP subscription, one of the items you will want to evaluate is cost. In this video, I'm going to explain what the FUE is and how we can calculate it in an existing SAP system that is on-premise. Let's imagine that you have an existing SAP ERP or S4HANA system and it is installed in your own data center or in your chosen hyperscaler, for example, Azure, AWS or GCP. This is what we call an on-premise system because it is using an on-premise SAP license model, also known as a perpetual license. How much does a rise with SAP S4HANA subscription cost compared to your existing perpetual license? Well, it all depends on the FUE. With RISE, there are benefits over and above an existing on-premise installation, but the cost is what we are trying to evaluate here. FUE stands for Full Usage Equivalent, and FUE is the license metric in a RISE with SAP S4HANA subscription. That's the key difference, really. The RISE model is subscription-based. When you move from an on-premise system into a RISE subscription, you can no longer use the old perpetual license model. A perpetual license is usually based on quantity and type of end users. Similar to perpetual licenses, the FUE metric uses quantity and type of users to calculate a baseline t-shirt size for the RISE subscription. These RISE t-shirt sizes, known as tiers, come with different options and benefits. It's like any other subscription-based service, with tiers like bronze, silver, gold, or basic and premium. Each tier increases in cost compared to the previous tier. The FUE model is weighted with a fixed weighting factor for each of the types of end users. The end user types are developer, advanced, core and self-service. These descriptions are reasonably self-descriptive. We can imagine a self-service user might need to do less work in an SAP system compared to an advanced user. How do we use the weighting factor? This is really easy. The quantity of the type of end user is divided by its weighting factor. As a really simple example, if we know a developer end user has a defined weighting factor of 0.5 and we have only one developer, then 0.5 divided by 1 equals 2. After calculating these values for each type of end user, we total the values and the final total is the FUE. The higher the FUE value, the likely higher the cost of the RISE subscription within the defined subscription t-shirt sizes, or tiers. But why does a developer have a higher FUE compared to a regular business user like a core user? It's all because of the authorizations and ability to access the SAP system and consume resources. The more restrictive the access and minimal resource consum consumption, the less FUE. Remember, it's a subscription-based service, so you are paying for an ability to execute tasks, and those tasks consume resources in the SAP system. Those resources such as CPU, memory, those cost money for the hosting provider, which is SAP. Look at the self-service user type. This is for a specific set of transactions and resources that a user can consume. Pre-calculating your RISE with SAP S4HANA FUE value can help you to evaluate your potential RISE tier, which influences which benefits are already included in your RISE subscription. A RISE with SAP S4HANA subscription is one subscription which can include multiple production systems, but only one FUE. This means you only need to count each end user once across all of your production systems. I mentioned that a developer end user has a higher FUE because of the authorizations. This is important to know because it means that the authorizations an existing end user has can therefore be used to categorize a developer or a core user or a self-service user. If we know how to define a particular end user in S4HANA using authorizations, then using those weighting factors, we can determine the FUE of each type of user types and total them up. However, Evaluating authorizations in an SAP system is not an easy task. There are thousands and thousands of authorization objects. This is where SAP have helped. If you are running ECC or S4HANA on-premise, you can use the report attached to SAPNote 3113382 for basis 702 to 758. And I think that's NetWeaver 702 all the way through to S4HANA. 
for older basses 700 and 701 than SAP note 3308470 has a similar report which can be used. Attached on both of those notes are Excel mapping files. We all use Excel, right? The ABAP reports created by those notes evaluate the authorizations assigned to existing users in the system to determine the approximate FUE breakdown. It's not an exact method because, for example, this estimation process cannot account for any role changes you may need to make during your business transformation from ECC to S4HANA. Don't forget that it is using existing users, so make sure that you try and exclude old, defunct, retired user accounts. There are, of course, prerequisite notes when implementing the above notes, and SAP states that the output from the report is just a rough estimate, and to consider also using the free SAP Trusted Authorization Review Service, STAR. Try saying that quick. The link to STAR is below in, in the description. As we found, the FUE is a total across all production systems in a subscription. If you have more than one production system migrating into a single RISE subscription, you will need to look at the users and not double count them. In summary, FUE stands for Full Usage Equivalent. There are different types of end users with their own weighting factors. The weighting factor is a way for SAP to charge for the type of resource consumption for those types of users. The charge is applied based on quantity of FUE, among other things. We can calculate the FUE in an existing system based on the authorizations. SAP have provided a set of ABAP reports to help estimate the FUE in an existing SAP system. And finally, knowing the FUE will not help you determine an exact cost for your rise with SAP S4HANA subscription. This is because of other factors, such as the size of the SAP system, number of environments, and other infrastructure or operational extras that you may need. But at least with the FUE, you may be able to understand the basic RISE subscription size, and from there, you can calculate the potential extra costs with the help of a cloud architect certified for RISE with SAP. As always, the reference links are in the description below. Drop me a comment down below, give the video a thumbs up, and most importantly, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and always wash your hands when leaving the cubicle. Bye bye.